We begin with the CSR dilemma. A socially responsible and ethical response to crisis provides evidence for future judgments about an organization. But this poses a challenge to crisis response. So let us briefly consider the role and impact of social responsibility on an organization's capacity to respond to crises. Today, organizations are increasingly expected to be socially responsible with active corporate social responsibility or CSR programs. Business cases for CSR argue that it creates value by enhancing a business's integrative capacity and focusing on interrelationships between shareholders, stakeholders, and society. Unfortunately, the direct relationship between CSR and the performance of a firm is tenuous at best, with findings directly linking to financial performance often problematic. At the very least, CSR was always thought to buffer organizations from crises with findings suggesting that social responsibility was strongly linked with a more positive pre-crisis reputation that helped to mitigate some of the negative effects of crises on organizations. However, even the positive benefit of CSR in the context of reputational buffering is being questioned. So this really begs the question, Why can social responsibility seem as pointless as putting lipstick on a pig? The reality is that while there have been debates about the efficacy of outcomes of CSR programs for organizations, social responsibility programs have been adopted by most modern firms because they assume it will help create value and appeal with stakeholders. Contemporary thought also places CSR as a pillar of public relations because social responsibility improves a brand's reputation and identity, customer relations, purchase intention, and it encourages consumer business engagement and collaboration. The core challenge for stakeholder-based approaches is that there can be a disconnect between the socially responsible identity that the organization communicates and any number of alternative or competing versions about the organization's identity, depending on the stakeholders asked. So if all this is true, then why is social responsibility not the panacea for building crisis response capacity? One explanation, as Coombs and Holiday would suggest, is that a crisis can violate stakeholders' expectations about an organization and thus create greater frustration and anger. I have no doubt that this is part of the challenge. However, my own research on social responsibility also suggests that stakeholders make evaluations about the authenticity of CSR behaviors. That is, how much stakeholders connect CSR activities with judgments about the organization's core values or its ideology as a way of evaluating how they feel about the organization. Motivation hygiene theory gives us a starting point for understanding why CSR isn't automatically beneficial for organizations. And, and when we're thinking about outcomes, we're talking about things ranging from improved profitability to crisis capacity building. So let's take a short look at the theory. Motivation hygiene theory is based on a relatively simple metaphorical question. Does showering every day make us a good person? Of course not. It probably makes us more tolerable to be around, but it doesn't make us a good person. So the theory predicts that if stakeholders believe that an organization is motivated to do good, then CSR works. However, if stakeholders believe that the organization only wanted to make itself look good, then guess what, it doesn't work. This is one of the reasons that paying attention to an organizational culture and ethics matters. That it's not just about creating an organization that looks good, it's about creating a good organization. We can talk about this good organization and its actions in terms of being authentic. Now, I know it's a buzzword, and honestly, in the way that it's discussed around social media and CSR circles, the buzzword is pretty meaningless. However, what I mean here is that stakeholders make a judgment about whether or not they believe the behavior is authentic, the evidence of the organization's motivation to do good versus the evidence of the organization just trying to look good. The challenge is that there's just not a lot of research out there at the moment that successfully identifies the factors influencing stakeholder authenticity judgments. I'm particularly interested in better understanding these authenticity judgments because they're incredibly informative in terms of crisis capacity building. So over the last few years, I've been working on some research to help figure this out. 
The two questions that I've been asking are first, what are the factors that improve the authenticity judgment? And second, when social responsibility is viewed as authentic, does it improve the organization's crisis capacity? From focus group interviews and a questionnaire to a broader participant group, it seems that the pathway to building crisis capacity via appealing to values requires three components. First, building stakeholder belief that their voice is heard by the organization, that no matter if they like or dislike the organization, it matters. Second, focusing on local community-based engagement, more so than helping people in far off places, when organizations treat their own employees and communities well, it's more believable. And third, already having a good reputation. This is a double-edged sword. If an organization doesn't have a good reputation, then its CSR efforts probably aren't going to be as effective. However, over time, consistently behaving ethically builds reputation and thus makes subsequent CSR efforts more believable. In combination with building an ethical organizational culture, being socially re responsible represents a tangible way for organizations to improve their capacity, even if that means that they're having to build or rebuild their reputations. Organizations have a pathway to building their identities in a way that improves their crisis capacity.